military to so give their mind away that when someone in a peak cap says shoot this group of people then without saying well why or what have they done to me or whatever it's all over yes sir yes sir the yes sir mentality mind control and if those people had a drink with the op opposition the opponents the enemy they'd probably get on fine but they don't get to that stage because when the peak cap says shoot they shoot they are mind controlled and this is what the military is about um, so you have mass mind control you have individual mind control and I'm just gonna now walk just around the corner from here and take you to the headquarters of global mind manipulation mind control has been known about for a very very long time and to understand many of the things that Arizona will be talking about in the interview, you just need to explain one of the fundamental techniques of mind control. It's called trauma-based mind control. There is a mechanism in the mind that shuts out the memory of trauma. You know when you, um, you have a, uh, a car accident and you can't remember what happened before, the trauma of the actual accident and immediately afterwards? That's because the mind puts an amnesic barrier around trauma. Now that's very, very good because obviously we don't want to keep reliving and re-remembering um, severe trauma like accidents and horrors of that kind. But this they began to understand massively in the concentration camps of Germany under the guy known as Joseph Mengele, the angel of death, the infamous uh, mind manipulator and geneticist. They began to understand that it, you, if you could systematically traumatize someone, particularly before the age of five and six, then you could turn their mind into a honeycomb of self-contained compartments, amnesic barriers, which were unaware of the existence of the others. And if through uh, hypnotic keys, triggers, uh, words, signs, whatever, you could pull one of these amnesic barriers to the front, to become the conscious level, that could experience something or be programmed to do something robotically, and then that compartment could be pushed back in the mind and another one pulled forward. Now this new one has no idea the other compartment exists, let alone what it's experienced or what it's been programmed to do. This has become known as multiple personality disorder, or DID, dissociative identity disorder, which is much more appropriate. And for short, these people are known as multiples, and this is some of the uh, terms that Arizona will be using um, in the interview. Now, we've reached a point here, if we just turn around, uh, of the headquarters of the Global Mind Control Network. This is the Tavistock Institute in Tabernacle Street, 30 Tabernacle Street in London. It was this network, and is this network, that coordinates the mind control program around the world, both on a mass and individual uh, level. The background to this organization um, is this. It used to be a part of the British military psychological warfare department, appropriately, and it was developed by a guy called Dr. John Rawlings Reese. And other uh, parts of the network were established around the world. Stanford um, in America is one of them. And together they coordinate the mass mind manipulation of the human race and mind program people on an individual level. Um, just to give you an idea, these mind control people are overwhelmingly those that do the assassinations. Why is it always a lone nutter um, that's responsible for assassinations? So people say, oh, he was just a nutter. Um, no conspiracy, no more investigation necessary. Why is it that the same psychological profile keeps turning up all over the world with guns, going crazy with guns in the street, killing people? creating problem reaction solution situations in which legislation comes through and is introduced as a result of those horrors. Interestingly, um, Martin Bryant, the man who uh, went crazy with a gun in Port Arthur, Tasmania, just happened to be um, treated by a guy called Dr. Eric Cunningham Dax. Now, Cunningham Dax um, was the Tavistock Institute representative in Australia and a close associate for decades of Dr. John Rawlings Reese that sent the whole, whole thing going. So when someone goes crazy with a gun or these horrific things happen, we need to ask the question, 
are they doing it from their own mind or are they programmed to do it because of the effect of what they do now Arizona Wilder was brought up from birth in these mind control programs and her programmer was Joseph Mengele the angel of death and when he uh, eventually died um, in the late 80s because the subject of the programming becomes uh, so attached to the programmer, almost worshipping the programmer. When the programmer dies, often the programming starts to break down. It did with this lady, and that's why now she's speaking out and talking in uh, staggering detail about what she experienced and the people that she was involved with. People might find it hard to believe that Joseph Mengele was in the United States and South America after the war, but there was a, a British intelligence, American intelligence operation called Project Paperclip, which got people like Mengele and other leading Nazis out of Germany at the end of the war to continue their mind programming and to continue their genetic research and manipulation um, in America after the war, in the, in the uh, United Kingdom also. So this is some important background to this Arizona Wilder interview. But it's not even the biggest secret. The biggest secret is even more bizarre than that. Well, I've now come literally a few strides outside of the official boundaries of the city of London into an area known as Temple Bar, where the Royal Courts of Justice are established. And this is the center of the British legal profession, not just the British legal profession, but the legal profession of the world as the biggest secret um, exposes. This is where they come to the bar, as it's said, to become barristers, the top of the legal profession, and eventually to become the judges um, that are part of the network of the secret society network, overwhelmingly, um, who are told what to do. And when you've got judges being told what to do by the secret society network, what justice is there? Um, Temple Bar is named after the Knights Templar, one of the secret societies in the ancient world that I uh, talk about in my books. And, and they were part of this network, and their successors are continuing that manipulation and agenda to this day. Now, I'm standing across the road from the Royal Courts of Justice here, outside something called the Outer Temple. This is one of the major secret societies that manipulate and uh, control the legal profession and the uh, workings of so-called justice in Britain and indeed, like I say, further afield. But the reason I've come here overwhelmingly is to point out um, something in the center of the road here at the uh, boundary between Temple Bar and the city of London and it's a massive uh, reptile figure, dragon figure, in the center of the road. Now, we're getting into what the biggest secret is here, because when you uh, go around London, and indeed looking at the uh, coats of arms of the aristocratic families, etc., again and again, you keep seeing reptiles, you keep seeing dragons, and you've got the serpent race and the dragon race constantly recurring in the ancient texts um, describing the gods of the ancient world. And there is a reason for this. There is a reason why dragons appear everywhere. And that is the biggest secret, which Arizona Wilder also has experienced. Right at the start of our little tour of London, in that square outside the Bank of England, it's also possible to see again this same theme that keeps reoccurring of flying dragons, of flying serpents. We've seen one major serpent figure, serpent statue, at one entrance to the city of London near the law courts, and here I am now alongside the River Thames at another entrance to the city of London, this epicenter of global control. And what do we have to signpost the fact that you're entering the city of London? Yet another flying dragon. This one holding the shield with the red cross and the white background. This ancient symbol that I talked about um, with the flag on top of the mansion house and the flag of England, the flag of St. George. So what's going on? Why, when you look at the ancient accounts of the ancient gods, do you again and again see this reoccurring theme of the serpent race, the serpent gods, the flying serpents? Why, in my research for The Biggest Secret, have I come across a stream of people from different walks of life all over the world who have told me the same thing, that they have seen to their astonishment and amazement They've seen key people in positions of power just demanifest from being a human physical form and become before their eyes a reptile.